Good morning. My name is Bobby Fisher, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Learning IronCAD webinar series. This is the uh, fourth lesson, and the, the whole premise is make my design life easy. So I'm going to get started, but before I do, I do want to share uh, the source for these lessons, and I'll just bring in a quick... This is uh, courtesy of TechNet. This is Joe Brower's company up in Washington. And uh, today we're going to be learning about IronCAD. And for anyone interested, you can, of course, on the TechNet site, which is technetinc.com. You can find all of these lessons. And so that's what I'm going to be using as a reference today as we go through this. And so today's lesson, as we've talked about, is, and I'll get right into it now, today's lesson is... You know, the uh, fourth in the series, as I said, and what we're concentrating on today is the IntelliShape deconstructed. Um, up to this point in time, we've uh, done setting up the scene, which is the first lesson, drag and drop design, designing with shapes, our second. And each one, and finally, the third lesson was streamlined sketching. We'll be doing these every second Thursday. So one thing I do want you to take a look at, folks, is if you want to see any of these lessons, you know, these links are available. I think you've got them somewhere on your site and you also let people know, but it's, you know, it's a simple matter of just, you know, grabbing this link. I'm just going to show you that real quick, dropping it into a, into any browser of your choice and it'll bring up directly. A bring lot up. of intelligence this, is built in this, this guy's intention. really noisy, but yeah. um, <laughs> so you'll be able to see all of the dis different lessons that we've done. Uh, here and that that's kind of a nice way to look at that. So I am going to get started right now, tell you a little bit about today's lesson, and that is the IntelliShape deconstructed and, and what that actually means. So let's talk about what are IntelliShapes. So what the heck are we dragging? Um, IronCAD's IntelliShapes let you push and pull to precisely adjust complex CAD geometry. And you can even customize, and I'm going to show you that today, by simply typing values or using your own complex parameters. And as this is an important statement because we're going to delve into this, the idea that you can use our pre-made shapes or even build your own to use any time on future models. So without any further ado, I want to get right into the uh, IntelliShapes. And let's go into the product so you can see that. All right, here's, I had it running already. Here's the IronCAD product. I'm going to start right from, for anyone used to seeing IronCAD. Um, and you can see the screen fine, Joe. I'm just picking on you because I want to make sure you can hear and see me. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So uh, all you know that, you know, we have our catalogs and we've, we've described what the scene is before with the ribbon and the uh, scene browser and property browsers over here, and then the catalogs and multiple different catalogs. But since this is on the IntelliShape, let's just start really simple. So this is the first part that we're doing. So I'm just going to simply take an extrude, a prismatic shape, and drag it and pop it anywhere on the screen. And there's something I want to teach you right from the beginning and that is i just i didn't pay attention to where this was my first shape so i just picked it up with the left mouse button button dragged it onto the screen and now i'm going to just actually fit the scene so there it is and what's important to recognize here is that where did it go where did where did it drop and so just show you real quickly i'm going to come in here and i'm going to right click on the, i don't want this plane hidden anymore and over here you know show me my coordinate systems and it shows me that we actually dropped this okay and and it's kind of interesting to know what happened here it actually dropped and if i want to question that i can just say where was that i brought up it's at zero 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 so the first thing that I drop out, it doesn't matter. It's not an aircraft position, you know, air, you know, it's, it's right at zero, zero, zero. And what is it that we actually drop? So I'm going to turn off the space, uh, space ball, or tri ball. And now let's take a look at this. And, and, you know, I don't really buy, you know, I'm working, you know, I had these turned on, but I don't really want to see the coordinate system. So I'm not, I'm just going to work with this part so you can see it. So what is it and, and how did this thing, you know, anyone who's worked with these before know that if we click on the part 
twice. So, you know, I've clicked once. If I click again, I'm now down into the IntelliShape levels. And let's talk about that for a moment. So I dragged and dropped this out. When I click on it once with the left mouse button, it says, this is part one. This is the part level. And the things that I can do here, you know, what are the part properties? I can set the name. I can set the uh, part numbers in here, the description. I can check what materials are being used, you know, if I wanted to add a material. But this is all the information that, you know, is in the part that's going to be on a drawing. But if I click one more time, I get into what we call the intelligent shape or the IntelliShape. And there's a huge amount of power in these IntelliShapes. And we'll be exploring some of this. And one of the most remarkable things is the fact that you know, we have these handles that we can drag at any time. And for anyone who knows our product, if you drag with the left mouse button, it pulls from the other end. If you drag with the right mouse button, it pulls equidistant. So it's kind of a neat little tool there. And I'm just showing you this. But what is this thing? You know, what, what actually, how was it created? Well, for those of you who exist in the SolidWorks Autodesk world, this was actually created if I right-click on it and come up here and say edit cross section, we can take a look and see, oh, it was actually created simply using a cross section. That's, that's what it was. This intelligent shape is nothing more than a sketch, but it's got a lot more power in it. We'll go into some of that. So what if I wanted to make a change right here? What if I just decided that, you know what, let's change this and let's put in a a circle and simply just come in here, find the middle of this and just, you know, drag a, a circle out like this. There's, there's our circle. And what if I just wanted to trim away that which I don't want? I just come in here and say trim. I don't need this and I don't need this. So I just click on it. And now that I've done that, when I exit the sketch, check what's just happened. We've actually taken what was a block and added this feature to it. And what's kind of interesting about this is that this is now, you know, I can still use the IntelliShape properties to just drag this and, you know, move like this. Now, if you remember when we first started, I said one click gets me to the part level. The second click gets me to the IntelliShape level. So I can drag these, but there's a third option which allows me to just, oh, there's a third click. And what that allows me to do is do what we would call face editing. And I was just editing that face and pulling it out. So really important to recognize that what we've done, and now of course I've changed this. I didn't add that to it. Neat thing about IronCAD, by the way, is that anytime we want undo, undo, I'm right back to that. And I can go all the way back to what? my original IntelliShape. So important, important to understand. Oh, one more thing that I do like to introduce people. Let me just delete that using, you know, bring in another one here just like this. This is now part two. Here's a neat idea, by the way, if you don't want to right click and search through all these, because there's a lot of options here, there's a really kind of neat little feature that's included in IronCAD. And that if you bring up the, there's a quick little menu that's brought up with the S key. And that only gives you the things that are, you're able to do with this right now. Oh, I could edit this feature or I could do what? Edit the cross section. So yet another way of getting in here and making a quick shape. And if I wanted to change this again and do something perhaps a little bit different, it lets me show you some power. So what if I wanted to create something that had three tangent tangents like this and I you know I want to create a shape now there's something really important that you know I didn't do I didn't actually add any constraints here there's no constraint I'm not even thinking about constraints but for those of you who love working in the solid work world of constraints that ability is always here you can always right click in an open space and say well what are the constraints that are being added and there's a constraint menu that says what would you, you know, what constraints would you actually like, you know, oh, I want tangent constraints to automatically be added for me. Now watch what happens when I do this three tangent circle. One, two, three. If you notice, there's little red icons. It's actually added a constraint for me. I don't even have to think about it and go look for it. 
So that was kind of neat. And another advanced command that I can show you is you noticed before when I did the trimming, I click, 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 click. Well, if you just hold down the left mouse button and, oh, I'm erasing, just erasing, boom. Just by holding down that and going over it, I was able to erase those and I'm still in that mode. And now I've got this and take a look at what I've just built. I took that original block, added a three tangent, and now I've got an IntelliShape that is based on the original, but it's, you know, perfectly easy for me to, and it's maintaining that tangency. So all the interesting things that I can do. There's a very quick example of how I can use a simple IntelliShape and create something radically different. So that's the first thing I want to show you because that's kind of a neat, a neat feature that they're based on these, on these interesting sketches that you can go in and make changes to. What about if I want to come in and, you know, actually create something, you know, a different style of IntelliShape. So let's leave this one here and go into a new scene. So what other types of IntelliShapes are there? Well, I see I've got this prismatic. Prismatic, what about, you know, something cylindrical? Okay, that's kind of neat. Well, what might I want to do with this? Well, here, you know, I'm just going to drag this. I want it to be six inches, and notice it just drags out, and I want it to be, say, two inches high exactly. There. So I've got an IntelliShape that is built this way. And how was this actually created? Remember that little trick? I can type in the S and just say, well, I want to go in here and edit this cross section. Okay. Well, I know I can, you know, make changes to this, but here's a neat idea. What if I want to use a center, and a, a rec, a center rectangle to create a slotted pin? So I'm just being, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be real careful here, folks. I'm just, you know, bringing this thing in and say, okay, well, I can use my fancy trim command to come in here and say, oh, I don't want these ones, or I don't want that. That was one keystroke, altered this, and now what was a very, very simple, um, a very simple shape has now become a slotted pin, and, you know, I can make it any, well, what do I want it to be? Do six inches high, and, you know, what's the width? I want it to be two. And so you can see this is, you know, there's my new slotted pin. And there's some very interesting things that we can do with this. You know, I was showing you before these, these are the drag handles. And the drag handles are really neat because you've seen with the drag handles how I'm able to make changes. But, you know, I can actually affect the underlying sketch without even making a change, without having to go into the sketch. So that was something we talked about that if I remember, if I said, okay, I want to go into the sketch and do this, this means I got to go into the cross section. I'm in this 2D mode, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't, I just, can I make a quick change without doing that? The answer is yes. The little bo box over here that says, I don't want to drag these handles, the drag handles. I want to look at the actual underlying sketch and here, now I can actually drag the sketch and watch this interesting thing that I'm going to do. So I'm dragging the sketch in space and changing this, but watch, watch what it also allows me to do. I'm in here now. I want to drag this drag handle and I want to show you something interesting. Just by simply moving that, I changed it from a slotted pin to, oh, Okay, I've got, that's kind of neat. And that was, and I did not have to go into the sketch to do that. I did it from directly outside. Whole idea is that we want it to be very, very easy to use. Now, so far I've just shown you the sketching, but you know, what else, you know, what else can I do with these shapes? How else can they, you know, how can they help me design? I'm going to keep things really simple because I don't, you know, another cylinder. Let's do a quick, you know what? Actually, no, I'm going to show you something I think is more exciting, a spin shape. Remember we said intelligent shapes? Well, this IntelliShape is based on what? Well, let's look at this one and say, come in and, oh, I'll show you yet another way to edit this. I want to edit it based on the, the history tree here. So I'm going to come right over here into the history. This was a spin shape, and there's a cross section. Oh, let's go in and edit that cross section. There it is. Oh, we were spinning this cross section around. 
So, you know, what might I want to do with this? Well, what if, you know, what if I just wanted this to be slightly tapered on the inside like this? I'm just drag, drag. Oh, I'm going to say go away. Um, is just is there a way to just delete that? Oh, I just came out of it. Sorry, folks, I, I made a mistake. I did. I said don't don't even pay attention to what I'm doing here. Hey, uh, can I drag? Oh, there we go. I, of course I can. I'm I'm. So what I wanted to do is change that shape just by simply dragging this and you know putting it into a different location and and I've done that and what happened? Well, the shape now changed internally. And, and it's changed that way, which is kind of neat. Well, what if, you know, what if I don't like that and I want to undo it? Well, that's just simple. Undo. It's back to where it was. Unlimited undo and redo. What about combining these shapes together? What would happen if I grabbed the cut cylinder and said, drop this directly on this shape? Oh, so I've now started to use two different shapes. I want this to be one inch. There's the one inch that I put there. And gosh, I don't know how long I want that to be. I'm just going to come down here and say I want it to be an inch long as well. So there you see I've got this shape in there. And as you notice what's happening, I really want it to go all the way through the part. So very interesting. I can actually just come in and say in this intelligent shape, there's a forward end condition and there's lots of choices here. I want this to go all the way through the part. And as you can see, it's now cut directly through this part. Well, that's too large. I want to go back and change it to 0.75. Oh, sorry. A comma 75 doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, 0.75. Okay, good. I made that change. And what if I want, I don't know, what if I want six of these around the part or seven of these around the part. Well, I'm going to use the try ball here and we have gone over this in a different class, but I'm going to move the try ball to this to the middle of this. And all I really want to do is rotate using the right mouse button here like this. What I'm doing, I'm going to say create a link. I want five of these and I want them at 60. There's the angle. Dang, dang, dang. So that was kind of interesting and creating, and that's, you know, I've only really used two shapes here and they've, they've linked together, but here's a neat idea too that I want to give you some information about these. Oh, there's the first one. Tell me the properties. You have some, shows me every one of these that are linked in the system. So it shows me that even though this was shape two, shape two is linked to shape three, shape four, shape five, and those are all cylinders so it's showing me the relationships that are in this particular part that I built but here's something really neat the original shape was a spin shape that of course I can come in now and say well what if I want to take this shape and you know extend it down you know I want to actually just drag or what was the original spin you know what come in here and what are, how long should this be this is where I can say well you know, what's going on, what direction do I want this to uh, to go in? And I have all these different, you know, abilities where I want this to be much longer. When I'm done with it, look what just happened. Or I can come into this original shape and do something silly like this, where what if I come in and grab it and say, pull it up this, uh-oh, you see, this wasn't built. Oh, it's a nice spline shaft. This wasn't built. I didn't give them the intelligence that they actually needed. And so what I can do now is go right back in without reorienting any history and just say, you know what? I want the back to go through the part as well. And so now, no matter how I change this, no matter what size, shape, however long I make it, it will always, it has the intelligence to drag these always with them. So they'll always be going through the part in the front and the back which is kind of and that doesn't matter it there's no there it doesn't really matter what I do to change this particular part they will of course if I go in there and do this this um, any of the changes that I make even if I come out a little bit notice what's happening there they're still as I say they're coming through and and they're cutting through that cylinder. so that's where I'm using multiple shapes together but let's 
let's go right into the next example because that, by the way, and I'm following this, and if you if you need to see this type of thing, I'll be you know it's on the website and you can look at that. But I'm going to show you the next part of the IntelliShapes. And if there are any questions, please feel free to, you know, ask me. I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to make a plastic part. It's, it's going to be pretty simple, but it lets me show you how we can create from a very simple shape here, how we can actually build our own intelligent library. So the first thing I'm going to do, bring it in. And how long do I want this to be? Well, I want it to be six inches long, right? By mm, three inches wide by one inch high. So, you know, or you know what? I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it 1.5 exactly, right? So I've got my first part. But it's a plastic part. So plastic parts are generally shelled. Now, I see down here my part started right here. I can see this arrow. It started right here. And let me just show that to everybody because I, I want you to be able to see it. So there is an arrow right here that shows me it's coming up the, in this direction, which means this down here is where it starts. All right, let's get rid of my little drawing. Go back into normal pen mode. And now let's check out and see what other what other power do I actually have in this IntelliShape? What other properties are here? Well, I can see there's some general you know, things about the size box, but I said it's a plastic part, so I want to shell this shape. And I'm going to give it a wall thickness of 0.1. And I said, you know, the bottom is the starting section, so open that up for me. So the bottom is now going to be open. Oh, which, what did I do? Oh, maybe I did the wrong one. No problem. Just go back in. I, I did the wrong. Let me take a look. Look at the properties. Back to the shell and say, no, I said the end section. The, the start section is supposed to be open. I made a little mistake. Okay, no worries. Oh, so now the end section is always, it, oh, that's kind of interesting. So I've created a shape that has intelligence built into it. And no matter what I do, this shape will always have a, a shell attached to it. Cool. With a 100 thou wall thickness. What if I need taper? It's a plastic part. Let's look at the IntelliShape properties. You'll see why I'm doing this and what else might I be able to do? Well, I want the sides of this plastic part tapered. And I'm using a big taper here. Tilt angle of minus five. Let's take a look at that. And now this is as you can see, it's done this inside and outside. So I've got tape added. Well, what if I also need, it's plastic. I need the plastic to flow. It always is going to need fillets or blends. So no worries. Let's make our, our plastic, you know, this part that we're building. Let's look at bevels. And I can say, well, the sides, I want them blended bigger. So I want a half inch blend. And, you know, the shelling edges on the inside, you know, maybe I'm not even going to do anything. I just want to show you all what happens here. Oh, okay. So, it did, oh, I have a little, oh, I kept it sharp in the inside. So now that, that was a bit of an error. So that's my fault. I, I knew that I should have done this as well. So I go back in and simply on this, this beveling, I could say, well, the, the side section edge is a 0.5. The, the, what do I want on the? the end section. I want that end section to also have a maybe 0.125 and the shelling edges on the inside, I want it to be blended 0.4, something like that. So let's take a look at what I've done now. Cool. I've got the inside. I've got the top. Kind of neat. So I'm creating the plastic part that makes a lot of sense to me. Good. And what else might I want to do with this? So got this part. What, let's just take a look at some of the options, and then you're going to understand where I'm going with this, because I want to create an intelligent part, and I'm going to say that if this ever intersects any other geometry, give me a 0.125 radius. Okay? Now, it's not intersecting anything right now. And it's not doing that. It's just, but here's the clever part about what we're going to do. 
I have something called the IronCAD USA, and this happens to be my catalog. And this catalog I use, you know, if, I, if I'm doing lots of different parts, things like that, I can say, well, if I was building something, you know, these, this is my catalog. I got something out, you know, if I was. So this is the catalog I use, but I want to add this particular, you know, part, which is I'm going to rename it and call it my plastic part. Um, Okay, or I'm going to call it my intelligent. All right. And once I've done that, I'm going to just say, I want you to take this shape just like that and drop it directly in here. And so now I have a, a block shape that I can use. And why did I do that? Well, I want you all to see something now. If I go into a brand new part, completely new I've now saved this for the future where I can say this block, everything that I've built into this part is now saved and it has all of the intelligence. So if I come in and say, well, I need to do a, a bigger one here. This, you know, needs to be 10 inches or, or, or whatever. Oh, sorry. It needs to be five by, I want it to be five by 10. There we go. So this is a bigger, you know, bigger part than the other one. Actually, I want it more um prismatic this way so i'm going to make it 7.5 something like that so it's a bigger part as you can see and you'll notice i'm you know changing but it has all of the intelligence but here's something that's really clever really really clever i want to put another one of these and i want to merge these two together so what i'm going to do is put another one directly on top and this is kind of neat well oh this did something remarkable. This one, it actually blended automatically when I hit the, when I hit this part. It it this intelligent shape that I dropped. It said, "Okay, no problem, Bobby. Um, I'll just you know blend that way." But I noticed something else. It didn't it didn't shell through this, and and I don't know why. You know, I mean, oh, okay. So now I've got a shell within a shell. So it's smart enough to know that, but. I don't need this extra piece. So I'm going to show you something really, really clever. I'm going to leave what I'm working on here. And I'm going to say, well, my library part that exists right here, I want to edit that library part, which says, oh, this is a catalog item. Go and edit my catalog item. Here's my catalog item. So I'm going to edit it. And I happen to know that there's a really neat feature, another IntelliShape feature that says, I want to make sure that where this starts, I want this to automatically match whatever face it hits. If I pop this onto something else, I want it to match that face. Now, why did I do that? Let's get out of this and say, yep, save the changes. And you know what? I don't want this one anymore because I want to drop it. I've added intelligence to this. So now I'm going to put this directly on here. Great. And, you know, without any real thinking, I'm just going to drop it through. And what happened? Well, it matched that top face and said whatever that top face is, however the top face was, it's going to match it. And what makes this really, really powerful is the fact that I'm able to just build and work with this. And so I can add, you know, I put this in the middle, so I'm going to equidistant stretch it. Uh, I want it to be four and a half inches on the top. And, you know, I want this to be a little shorter. I, you know, I only want it to get right there. And what would happen this is beautiful because it's in on this side. What would happen if I now say I want another one? Well, check this out. Okay. Oh, it's, it's yelling at me because I, I haven't got it beautifully set yet, but I'm going to come in and I'm going to say put this one here. Good. And it's doing some really interesting work that I want you all to understand. It's actually coming in and everywhere it meets another face, it's doing all the intelligence. So what I what I really want people to see and and clue into here is that I didn't have to tell it to add a fillet. I didn't tell it that it has to add um, the, the the taper. I that's it's intelligent. It's remembering that. So no matter what geometry I would use it with, it doesn't really matter 
if I go out and say, well, I've got something else in my library, what, you know, what is this, you know, what is this shape? It doesn't much matter what that shape is. And, you know, I'm looking for anything that I may have. If I come into this one, let me just see if I, what happens when, I, okay, this was a, a, an interesting little block. What would happen if I take this one and just that thing we just created. What if I just took this block and put it here? It says, I don't care, Bobby. I can, you can add me to any geometry you might want. And all of the rules that existed, everything that we created will, of course, automatically function. So any of the fill-inning, you know, gets done for me automatically as, as I'm working. This one doesn't have a shell, but, you know, as, as I work, you'll see, sorry, I'm, I'm, why are you why are you arguing with me? It's trying to uh, am I below there? I don't let me just see what it does. Oh, it did trim it off. But if you'll notice what it had had done is it's shelling, it's adding this technology, everything that we had done before, all of that technology is still being used on a completely different part that had absolutely nothing to do with this. So just as a quick review, we were able to create some very interesting things. So we started out with a very, very simple, by the way, this part here started as a simple block. It, it started as a simple block and then I altered the shape to create something that has, you know, this different sketch parameters to it. The second one started as a simple cylinder, but using the handles in a unique way, I'm able to say, no, I want to change this and turn it inside out. And this is something I would challenge people who work with SolidWorks or Autodesk to do. The idea that we can grab this geometry and we're really creating a situation that most systems would fail because I, I turned what was an innie into an outie. And Iron Cat says, I don't care, you know, and by the way, these movements I'm doing, I, I can always use exact numbers. I'm just not, you know, I'm just not using any numbers right now because I want to show you the technology. This one, again, I used different intelligent shapes together and told them you must pay attention to however long this is. This one, I said, well, I want to create a plastic part, which has lots of different technology built into it that I can use. And that technology means that one shape, one simple shape can automatically give me a very, very complex and interesting part, which is now has a lot of power in it. Because, you know, if I decided I wanted to blend all this stuff and say, you know, give me that blend on the inside, it's blending everything that it can find inside here. You know, so all the everything is being blended on the inside. And by the way, it's kind of neat that blend that I just did. Of course, I have the ability to move that blend around and OK, it didn't find. Let me move it here. Oh, you failed. I know you did. I don't care. But by the way, this is something interesting. I think you all need to see is that I'm never nervous, ever nervous about this thing is it said, Bobby, I couldn't make the geometry work. And I just say, okay, just doesn't bother me. I'll just, I'll just reorder it. Oh, I, I noticed I didn't get the blend on this because the blend happened before I put this one in. So, oh, okay, just yeah, I know you're upset, but it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna reorder that so the blend happens at the end, or, or even different than that, I can say I'm renaming it. Now everything is blended. So as I drop through, and of course. Of course, any of the changes that are made, it doesn't really much matter what I'm doing here. Any of the changes that I'm making, it's going to, you know, it's going to take these things. And I've never tried this, but, you know, it's pretty neat because it's taking all of this technology and dropping it through. And, you know, so I'm getting a really cool part. And remember, this started, this started life as a very, very simple prismatic shape. So quick review on IntelliShapes. What the heck are we dragging and dropping? You've seen me push and pull to this. You've seen me customize and add parameters, these parameters to go all the way through. And something else that's really neat that I've shown you. And this is an excerpt from a reviewer. 
Iron Cat's dynamic interaction between objects is, is nothing less than prices. So I've shown you that the push-pull handles work with 3D shapes, but they also let you interact with any 2D sketch that is extruded to 3D. And that was the point that I was making here. When we're inside this part, when we're working on this, this original, this original sketch, by the way, it's still there. I can go back and say, oh, I want to... I want to come in here and and even now, even now that I'm deep inside this thing, I say, you know what? I really, I really want to change again what I'm looking at here and, and go ahead and add three tangents to this. And and I'm right in the middle of the design. Do the trim. I want this one gun and I'm holding down that button. Let it go and get rid of this one and kind of a neat idea. Finish it. Let's see what happens. So I've radically changed changed my plastic part but everything is working everything still goes so that's a you know there's so much power and capability here so interact with any 2d part these anchor points i was able to put these in now that actually lets me show you something else i'm going to go one further so you've watched me do this innovative push and pull technology now the most powerful part of this is that if you're interested joe don't you dare get mad at me and and start yelling at me now i just want to show uh one last thing so you folks can see it anytime now the, this is everything that i've shown you comes with the base system i'm going to show you one thing this is an add-on package built by a third party and it just lets me show you what what other tools are are, are what tools are available to use let me just take a look at this what might i want to look at give me this there's an add-on package and that add-on package from a third party does uses everything the intelligent shapes in a remarkable way and here's how they are so for example i'm going to use fabrication and do some steel fabrication and what is it done well it's got now a new type of intelligent shape this is this one. I want a 24 inch long shape that is beveled on both ends. So I'll just show you what that is. There it is. It's beveled. And this is still an intelligent shape because anytime I want, I can say, no, I want this to be 36 inches. And I've changed that. But here's where it gets really exciting. I need to build a frame. So put this on make it 48 inches long it automatically out of the library selected sorry i want it 64. it automatically selected the correct shape and it automatically made it that and so anytime i use this and this is the power of these intellishapes taken to the nth degree and i'm just using this to build this frame, as you can see in front of you, and oh, I noticed that that's a little bit too long. So, of course, I could bring it back here and say, oh, that's too long. Um, but I don't want to have to do all that work. I want this to work for me so I can just say, you know, extend what? I want this to be automatically extended so that it meets this. And this is the, this is how the intelligent shapes are really, really powerful. And and again, don't forget anything that you know we're working on. I can come in here and I want to take this and this and use my, you know, and turn that in. So you and and moving things around, doing any of the kind of work I want, global, you know, I'm I'm moving, changing, but I don't want to do that. I'm being silly. The idea that we have the nth degree, we have such power here. Oh, by the way, how much power? What can you actually do with this? Just so you know, the it can go to a very, very um, advanced degree where these intelligent shapes can actually be built into a library. So, you know, I'm loading an entire factory that's been built of intelligent shapes. Yep, sure. 
and it's a it's full size factory entered large you know so here's my full size factory that is actually built with intelligent shapes and has all sorts of power built into it including things like the visualization for animation and so on um, go ahead and turn on my animation if you would if you don't get mad at me and uh you know what it's getting I, I don't want to overstay my welcome here and go ahead and play and you'll see now it's running through and it, that the animation will work and of course you can save these animations to do all that kind of thing so enough with that back to my powerpoint because i've kept you longer than i thought i would intellishapes interact with multiple surfaces as you've seen and they can cruise along one object's axis set a depth in another and smart stuff all of these make my design life easy. Webinars are available online. This is your IronCAD team. We have well over 255,000 users worldwide with 165 plus resellers that are available. Uh, on behalf of Joe Brower and I, I'd like to thank you very much for um, your attention today. This is, you know, our, our IntelliShape program. We're happy to help you. We do online training um, free of charge for people that are testing the software or doing the trial. Uh, if there are any questions, I'll wait for a moment for questions to come in, but it has been a real pleasure for me. Um, I, I hope you all enjoyed it. Joe, thank you very much for being here. Igor and Kenneth and others, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, the attention and uh, this this will be available for you to uh, see very very soon i'll i'll post the recording thank you for attending bye bye everybody